This is a story about the mobile phone. If I asked you to stand up if you own one, I'm sure you all would stand up. More likely than not, though, we take it for granted, but this very simple device actually has the power to change lives and to improve the health of the poorest and most underserved people around the world. I don't know if you know, but there are over 4.6 billion mobile phones in the world right now. That's more than two-thirds of the population. And actually, if you look at the trends over the last decade, most of that growth has happened in the developing world. So the question is, how did this happen? Well, there are a number of things that have brought this about. One is technology standards have been developed and adopted that have allowed for economies of scale. So developing infrastructure is easy and it's cheap. And prepaid systems have been put in place. So all you need is cash. You don't need a credit card. You don't need a credit history, nothing like this. Also, liberalization of markets has introduced competition. So prices for services have fallen. And actually, it's the case that in most developing countries, you can buy a basic mobile phone for less than $20. And finally, there are real macro and microeconomic benefits to phone ownership, from impacting GDP to providing employment opportunities. In fact, it's been shown that if you add 10 mobile phones for every 100 people, you could increase GDP by almost 1%. So what I'm talking about is taking advantage of the most impressive technology adoption in history and leveraging a tool that is in everybody's hands. All right, so let's see how mobile technology is being repurposed to strengthen health systems and empower people. In the wake of post-election violence in Kenya, a group of hackers came together and developed an application called Ushahidi. It mashes up SMS, email, web forms, and mapping to provide monitoring. And it was being used to track outbreaks of violence. Today, Ushahi is actually being used to power the Stop Stockouts initiative across Africa. Uh, simple text messages are alerting health officials to uh, stockouts of essential medicines, ensuring that life-saving drugs are being directed to where they're needed the most. Frontline SMS is, a fr is free and open source software that basically turns a, a computer and a mobile phone into an SMS gateway. Um, it was developed specifically for limited resource settings and is being used to monitor elections, to coordinate disaster relief, um, and for many other purposes. Frontline SMS Medic was developed in rural Malawi. Using a donated computer, 100 recycled phones, and a copy of the software, a communications network was set up for community health workers to coordinate emergency care, to track patients, improve drug adherence, and connect support groups. In South Africa, mobile providers provide a service called Please Call Me, or PCM. If you're out of airtime, all you do is send a free message to your friend that says, give me a call. They get a message with your number, but there's a lot of extra space on that message. So a group of organizations thought to themselves, why not take advantage of that extra space for health messaging? And Project Masiluleke was born. They convinced MTN to donate 5% of their PCM messages and tack on a message about their helpline, and in one month, calls tripled. Providing diagnostic services is also a super challenge in these, uh, in these environments. Hardware is really expensive, it's difficult to procure, it's difficult to maintain. There's a severe lack of trained personnel as well. So how do you make diagnostics available? Well, there's a group at UCLA that has developed a technology called Lucas. What this does is it actually takes an image of the shadow of a cell using the mobile phone's camera. This information can be used to uh, detect and to treat HIV, TB, malaria, and you know, no lenses are required, and the extra hardware costs less than $10. But all is not completely rosy. The cost of mobile services in the, in the developing world is disproportionately high, and in some, in some cases, astronomical. For example, in Kenya, the bottom three quarters of earners spend 25% of their income on mobile services. And while you can buy a mobile phone for $20, this is the most basic phone. We're talking voice and SMS. We have feature phones, smartphones, data, all of that, but most of this is not available to these people. And then there's research. So there is a lot of, uh, there is a lot of like, anecdotal evidence about the impact of mobile technology on health, but not a lot of data. And before, funders will give significant resources, they want proof. So we're in this sort of a catch-22. We need support to generate the evidence, but we need evidence in order to generate the support. But these challenges are not insurmountable. You know, people are willing to pay money for the technology because it meets a need. And service, the cost of services and, and hardware is falling every day. And personally, I look forward to the $20 smartphone because, because that will truly revolutionize global health and the data will come. So the question is, what can you do to support this? You can support Hope Phones. Uh, find your old mobile phones at home. You have at least one. 
print out a free shipping label, send it in, it'll be recycled, and the proceeds will go to buying a new phone for a health worker in a developing country. So this is an opportunity. This is maybe one of the greatest technological opportunities we've ever had. A lot of amazing work has already been done, and I look forward to what this next decade brings, uh, saving lives one mobile phone at a time. Thank you very much. Yeah.